Humor is very essential to human lives. And um, study has shown that humor helps to calm the nerves and thereby helping to relieve stress. Humor is presented in different ways in a way of comedy and skit. The conversation started yesterday where we looked at comedy and the advent of skit making in the Nigerian entertainment industry. And of course, the conversation will continue today with that. And don't forget that today is Easter Sunday. That is the day that Christians world over commemorate the resurrection of Jesus Christ after his crucifixion. And today on Weekend Deal on the network service of the NTA, we will be looking at all these issues. So join me in this two hours of your time to you know, together, look at these issues together. I am Shikeola Ipenaye, and I will be your host today. Before we go into the issues of comedy and skit, let us talk about Easter Sunday, the day that commemorates the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah, um, Francis Obey has put together the piece to intimate us of the essence of that day that, of course, is the pillar of Christian faith. Francis. Christians all over the world today mark Easter, which is the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead on the third day after his crucifixion. It is believed to be the foundation of the Christian faith. Today there will have been a complete mockery of Christianity if Jesus was not victorious over death. And from there he nailed all evil powers to the cross. And that tells you and I that good can still triumph over evil with what Jesus has done with this Easter. That means whatever is dead in the life of any man can be restored, can come back to life with that message, that Easter. Without the resurrection, there is no Christianity. Jesus said he would die. He will be in the grave for three days. And on the third day, he will be out of the grave. Among um, different people that have died, there is one grave that is empty. It's the grave of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus, of course, which is Easter, is a celebration of the triumph of life over death. It is a statement that what God says, he has the power to bring to pass, no matter the situation. The celebration of life, the celebration of the triumph of Jesus over death, the celebration of the validity, the authenticity, the power of God's word, that all the time when God speaks, he's committed to bring his word to pass. Even in death, the word of God came to pass. That's what Easter basically is all about. Easter follows a period of fasting called Lent, in which many churches set aside time for sober reflection. A penitential period preceding Easter. So it is a preparatory period for Easter celebration. And uh, there can be no... You don't just jump into celebration without actual preparation. We prepare in form of fasting and then remorse for our sinful nature and bear in mind that we are dust and unto dust we shall return. The week leading up to Easter is called the Holy Week or Passion Week. Holy Week is that week leading to Easter 
and it is the final stage that stays the dramatic and comprehensive life of Jesus before he was killed. By the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he has given eternal life to those who believe in him. Yes, we are aware that we have challenges in our nature. We can summon them if we actually look unto God and trust in his power, trusting in the power of Christ. We can summon that. And so it is a call to all of us to look unto Jesus to help us summon our challenges in his nature. Leadership is all about sacrifice. And um, Jesus demonstrated that leadership by the ultimate price he paid. Uh, he didn't die for himself. He died for the sake of the world. I have a ministry today and I have a message to preach because somebody died, somebody paid the price. Sacrifice is the cross of leadership. This is wishing all and sundry happy Easter celebration. Yeah, happy Easter Sunday to all Christian faithful out there. Uh, before we continue on the issues of Easter, I just want to tell you that I have two gentlemen in the studio. I have Onome the Saint. You're welcome to the show. And I also have Mr. Ode, a comedian. Thank yeah, you the, for the coming on the show. Comedian. You said? The uncommon the comedian. The uncommon comedian. Yes. That is right. Okay. On Still talking about Esther, in the medieval era, the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, uses drama to illustrate biblical uh, messages. And still today, the Roman Catholic and other churches, they still use drama to illustrate issues. And that brought about passion play. At this, uh, Godwin Ebony went round the churches to see how to see their passion play, which depicts the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That is the celebration preceding Easter. The origin of drama is deep rooted in the religious predispositions of mankind. During the medieval period, drama was used to preach the gospel. The ancient Greek and Roman dramas were mostly concerned with religious ceremonies of people. As most of the Bible was written in Latin, common people could not understand its meaning. That's why the clergy tried to find some new methods of teaching and expounding the teachings of the Bible to the common people and drama presented that opportunity. I dig into the deep. My children, I cannot be with you very much longer. I tell you what I told the Jewish authority. Where I'm going, you cannot come. Sergeant! If I'm the one you're looking for, then let these others go. Marcus! Stop! Arrest this man! Just stop! Oh! My mother! Put back your son into his seat. Am I not to join the call of salvation? I am the good sleeper. I know my own, and my own knows me. In the present day wind of the Holy Week, some churches celebrate passion play through drama to depict the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary. The enactment of the play is for people to have better understanding of the journey of Christ to the cross. Move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. it's a very challenging time now 
a time of sober reflection, a time when we're supposed to be in a mood of prayer, seeking divine intercession. Parish priest of St. Teresa Catholic Church, Buari, Reverend Father Thomas Asen says, telling the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection reminds mankind of how God entered into the world of suffering and paved the way to new hope. According to him, the suffering and the passion of Christ is the measure of his love for the world. For the clergy, faithful should use the suffering of Christ as sober reflection in living a life of sacrifice for one another. The life of Jesus Christ, the death of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of Jesus Christ tells us about the life of sacrifice and his love for the world. I told you earlier that I have two gentlemen in the studio who will be talking to us about Esther and of course they are comedians. They are here to also crack up our ribs a little. So honome the saints. Yes. He is the president Edo Delta Catholic Community of St. Luke Catholic Church. So I believe he's in the right place to talk to us about Easter. Oh, sure. Sure, sure. Uh, okay. <coughs> so today is Easter. As a president, you are wearing two caps here now. As a president of uh, Edo Delta Catholic Community of St. Luke, what do you have to say about Easter? Uh, well, Easter for Christians is the most significant um, celebration. Easter is the reason why we are Christians. Because if, uh, first off, it is a celebration of the resurrection of uh, Jesus, you know, from the dead. It means he conquered the death. And by conquering death, he gave us life, the life that we had lost to sin, you know. Uh, so that makes it more significant, you know, than even Christmas itself. Uh, Again, Easter is also for us to have more confidence, confidence in, 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 in God, you know, and be true to God. So the whole essence of Christianity actually borders around Easter. And so that is why we celebrate this day. Um, we, there, there was a commemoration before the Easter day. There is what we call the Holy Week. It starts with the Holy Thursday, uh, that was where Jesus was arrested and tried. He was killed on Thursday, I mean on Friday. And then that is Good Friday. Yes, Good Friday. And then um, he resurrected on Sunday, conquering death. Okay. That day that Jesus died is called Good Friday. In your opinion as a Christian, why do you think this day is referred to as good? It's, it's revive hope. It's make the Christian know that... Um, there is someone that, that have come to pay price for the Christians, for our sin. Mm -hmm. Because we sin every day. And what I can we do is to celebrate Jesus Christ because his resolution, resolution of that day and when he died. And being Easter Sunday, it makes us feel that being celebrating Christ is another way of celebrating God. As my colleague has just said, he says it's all about humanity. And for me, the death of Jesus Christ is the only solution to, to, to the Christian world that there is power and there is resolution in, in God. Okay. Now, the Easter celebration is both a time of sober reflection and also celebration. As uh, we, you know, it's a time to reflect on the love of Christ on, and also on the sacrifice of Christ to humanity. So what does this tell us as humans? Oh, well, as, as, as humans, uh, the, of course, the, the period is a period of uh, both celebration and um, of, of sadness. There is nowhere anybody dies or suffers that you're happy, okay? And so that is where the sad part comes. And you see, the, the issue here is that he died not necessarily of his own sins, so to speak. Mm. He, he died for, for mankind. You, for, for mankind, mankind's crime. If not me, I don't agree. I go. <laughs> then it, became, it becomes celebrational, a happy moment, because of the resurrection. 
you know, be, to the resurrection, mankind now has salvation. So, yes, the moment of death, suffering and death, is a sad part. The moment of the resurrection is the, the, the happy part, the joyful part, which we are celebrating. Today. Thank you very much, guys. You can actually pass for clergy because you have given us, <laughs> you know, if, if, if you say that, you can to give us another call. On Easter. <laughs> okay, so this is a time of both sober reflection and, of course, of celebration. This is a time to reflect on the life of sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the life of sacrifice and love that Jesus Christ showed to mankind. Okay, we're continuing on the other issues on the show. That is talking about comedy and skits. Okay. Okay. So now, gentlemen, yes. you are in the entertainment industry as comedians. What do you have to say about the situation of comedy in the entertainment industry as of today in Nigeria? Comedy keeps evolving. Comedy keeps growing. You see, you, you find that <clears throat> by the day you have comedians coming on board every now and then. So the number of comedians are growing. People are beginning to appreciate comedy the more, you know, regardless of um, um, the economic situation. But yeah, basically it is, it is evolving. It is evolving for the better. Okay. <laughs> oh, Mr. Ode, <laughs> what's the position of comedy in the entertainment industry? You know, when you did your opening, you say humor. Mm. Uh, that we cannot do it as humor. Um, truth to be told to skit makers and uh, other people that claim you can, um, you, can, um, you, can, you can be a skit maker, a good skit maker, but you cannot become a good stand-up comedian. It's not possible, you know why? Because the two is different. He's my senior colleague, he has been in the industry for more than 15 years. And for him to be a stand-up comedian, he takes a whole lot of time, energy, money, investment to prove yourself that you're a stand-up comedian. But skit making, it's just a cut and join. Pick a story, add to it, look for one or two editors, you cut and join, put what the effect they want to put. At the end of the day, you claim to be a good stand-up comedian. No, I I look at it that the comedy you you cannot do without comedy in the society, day in day out. When you talk as he was talking about the economy, if anybody wants to laugh or they want to relieve their stress, the way the country is, the first people first people they will look for are comedians, stand-up comedians that will come and treat them. And the, the, the trendy story that is on, I will use it to create something humor for the community and for the society. That's why I say that when you say comedy is a master craft. And that is the truth. Okay. You know you said something about um, comedy evolves. And uh, kit making is actually one of the evolution of uh, in of comedy. Yes. Uh, well, because you know, be the advent of internet now, people go and uh, make skits and on social media platforms where people can easily access it. Now, for the benefit of our viewers, mm -hmm. let us first of all even differentiate between comedy and skit so that they have <laughs> a vivid understanding of what it is. Many people may not even understand that you know the difference. Stand up comedy is usually in most cases. A performance on stage with one mic, one man, one, one mic. mic. Stand up comedy does that as a person on stage. It is the comedian and audience, live audience. Okay. The skit uh, maker is behind the camera doing his recording, so you are watching. Now, it is usually very, very um, okay, it has been edited, it, it has been doctored. Okay, now that's the difference. For the stand-up comedy comedian, it is live. For the skit maker, it is virtual. It has been doctored. Okay, but um, I don't think there is any issue between the both mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, it is the same essence of providing for laughter. Now whether, providing humor. Humor, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now whether you like it or not, stand-up comedy has been there for ages. 
skit making became more popular, especially during the lockdown. Okay. Okay. That was where it really evolved, you know, because uh, everyone was indoor. There were no shows, were no, no live shows, shows. No live shows. Yeah, you we're know, performing so online. We're per performing online. Yeah, okay. The skit makers were, you know, doing videos, funny videos. And, um, well, it's, it's contributed a lot to relieving people, mm -hmm. you know. As at that point in time, you know, we're living in fear. Mm -hmm. So, um, comedy, both of them are comedy. Mm -hmm. Okay. One is live, one is virtual. And the truth is, we need a quarrel with each other. Okay? Uh, but, like he said, it is a different ball game when you are a, 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 I mean, a skit maker, comic skit maker, from being a comedian. You can be a stand-up comedian and be a skit maker. Okay? But it is not every skit maker's. That can, can be a stand-up stand comedian. Stand comedian. Yeah. Stand comedian. Yeah. You know, because it takes a lot. It takes the, the, <laughs> the <laughs> there is what we call stage fright <laughs> and all of that. You know, and uh, delivery and presence. So, uh, there are two different things, you know. But, um, the skit makers, there are also some that are actually comedians. Like, life, likes of stand-up comedians. They were stand-up comedians before they became skit makers. The likes of Edo Piki, you know, a couple of them like that. So they can, you know, uh, pass as stand up comedians and as skit makers. If I choose, I don't do skits, but if I choose to do skits mm. today, I will, I will do it very well. But I don't have the time, the energy to okay. put into it. So that's just the So which one can we say is more challenging between? Uh, skit making and uh, comedy you know comedy is just to stand up you were making some points on that uh, it's just that uh, you want to you want to compare dubai and lagos that is uh, what you're the question you're, you're, you're asking now okay. <laughs> <laughs> or you want to compare uh, football and american football but the truth still remains that comedy stand-up comedy is hard is a it's a serious job now imagine that okay some of them claim that they are stand-up like he said, some of them were stand-up comedians before they went into skit making. And then the ones that are, that are just skit makers are claiming to be stand-up. If you look at the shows in this period of um, Easter, there's no any skit maker that had learned any show. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't want to call names. There are a lot of comedy shows, both Lagos and Abuja. Mm -hmm. Check, there's no any skit maker. So if you want to talk about stand-up, Stand-up is a serious job. It's a serious business. As in, I would say, not because I'm a stand-up comedian. Okay. Comedians are the most intelligent people. Because you can imagine that we can just be sitting here. We're using whatever we're seeing to use to crack joke. Mm -hmm. But skit maker have to sit down with a group of people, with a director, with cameraman, with editor, to start mm -hmm. to direct what he wants to compile. As a skit. Gone are those days when uh, uh, we don't take it as skit. We call it short drama. Because, okay. uh, yes, we, we call it short drama. Mm -hmm. It was 2020, 2020, we are going to hear skit. I got to say, what did be skit? What did I know as skit? Nah, football, football, <laughs> uh, football jersey, boots, and the rest. Mm -hmm. But today we are seeing that there's competition. Okay. But in the comedy, there's no competition. So just hold it there. We'll come back to that issue. So now let's go to Kano. They want to tell us about humor and insults. There are times that, you know, comedy is about providing humor. And at times, this humor now becomes like insult. So let's just see when to draw the line between humor and insults. Kano. Make money, oh! Make money. Money is what important. If you don't get money, nobody find girlfriend. Go find work. I've basically been doing stand-up comedy professionally for like four to five years. I do. I do stand-up comedy. Okay. I do stand-up comedy, and um, I'm also a comedian. I'm an MC as well. Over the years, theater stages in Nigeria had been dominated by different hilarious stand-up comedians. 
highly creative and intelligent, giving so much entertaining pleasure to the audience as they set ribs vibrating with their hilarious jokes. Irrespective of the fact that I want to make people laugh, we try and make reference or we try and say things like during the time of protest, there are a lot of things to say to pass positive message and people will still laugh. During the, after this election now, I will have a lot of things to say as regards the Beavers machine, the Enec chairman. We will not insult them, but we will pass a message to the audience so that when it gets to, to that level, they will do it right. Comedy is about uh, knowing what to say, how to say it, and where to say it. So it's not like you go to um, where they are having, where they are mourning, and you are singing a happy birthday song. You see, it doesn't really tally. So if you go for uh, uh, an event, you have to study what kind of crowd, uh, uh, the kind of crowd that you have there. You have to study them and know how you're going to make them laugh. Much of these public shows were initially more popular at city event centers in the southern part of Nigeria. Today, stand-up comedy has gained much audience in Kano. I have been doing comedy shows in Kano. This will be my 11th year. I celebrated my 10 years um, in comedy and I've been doing it. And to be frank with you, the audience, they are amazing. In fact, in fact, it's something that if once I start planning, people will start saying, guy, have fun now. Put me, I want to come, I want to come. You know, those kind of things. So it's encouraging. In Kano, it's not where we want it to be, but people that started it before us have made us believe that it can be a livelihood. So we are putting positive energy in making sure that the people accept it, although it's accepted already. However, the advent of social media, Facebook, WhatsApp, TikTok, and so on, has basically led to the proliferation of short videos, otherwise known as skits, that are easily accessible online. And many believe it has taken over the standard of comedy. Now, uh, social media have taken over a lot of offices. So, uh, so everyone now, we're just trying to change. Uh, of course it has, it, normally before, before you can, you, you have to travel to go for auditions, you know, places like Lagos, Port Harcourt, Calabar, Kaduna, Abuja, to go for your, you know, um, trials for people to see you. But right now, you can just be in your home, and over hundred millions of people will know that there's somebody like you. So it is taken way. over. It yeah. has, in a way. Yeah. It has, in a way. As entertaining as they are, it is quite common to hear vulgar or insulting language from the comedians, sometimes crossing the line as they try to make people laugh. So uh, vulgar jokes are not actually jokes that are acceptable everywhere. Even in the South, some people will tell you no. It's just, a vulgar joke can be accepted in a certain place, maybe a different angle of entertainment. That's why it, it can be accepted. That's when your intelligence comes into it. Now, vulgar words come into it. There, 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 there's a way I will, I, will, I will throw shit to somebody or say, but I'm not going to say direct. Okay, when to draw the line between humor and insult. So, uh, you know, at times when uh, this applies more to stand-up comedians, when they are hosting, you know, big shows and they stand there at times, what they say, you know, they, the crowd seem to maybe provide them with their lines and inspiration to say something and at times the things they say now turn out to be like insultive and make the audience some of them a bit uncomfortable so when do we draw the line between uh, humor and insult well the line between humor and insult is very thin mm. you can actually slide at any time if you don't know what you're doing mm. all right uh, but um, comedians are beginning to, to study a lot. It also depends on the audience. You know, it, the insult and yabs varies from persons to persons. Okay, or I audience. think yabs is the, <laughs> oh, yeah, yabs. Is the most appropriate. Yeah, yeah, yeah yabs vary. It's very, it's yab and, and insult now. 
Mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying it that uh, they no. want to use. So yeah, it, it varies from persons to person. Mm -hmm. Like there was a time Ali Baba can actually tell Obasanjo anything. Mm -hmm. That is because of the relationship they had. And Obasanjo will laugh, mm -hmm. laugh and laugh and raise but legs nobody, and hands. Nobody else can try that okay. as a comedian. So why? Because. Sometimes it depends, like I said, it is the relationship. I can tell you anything I want to tell you, okay? Now, if you see somebody that you do not have that kind of relationship with, what you need to do is tell your jokes, not going personal. Because it is in going personal that you are sliding away from yab to insult, all right? But if, if I come on stage now, I tell my jokes, and I leave, fine. If I see somebody that I know, I can actually tell the person whatever I want to tell the person. The person will laugh. If I tell that same thing to another person that I don't have that relationship with, he takes offense. So it is about you knowing who and who is here, your audience, like MCJ, you know, said, and then what you have to say at that point in time. It is better for me to say, I know him. I can tell him, see your big head. He will laugh. I can't tell that man over there, see your big head. Because there's no relationship. There's no relationship. I could say, oh, bro, this is your head, Sha. Get level. Get level. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? He will laugh and think of his head. But once I say, see your big head, it now becomes an insult on him. So, drawing the line, a lot of times also has to do with your relationship with the audience. Okay. If I go to my church, for example, mm -hmm. where everybody knows me, I can't say anything. <laughs> they, will, they are fine. There are audiences I go to that already knows me. I can't say anything. But if, if I go to a neutral audience, I need to be cautious. Nigerians find humor in everything. In politics, even as serious as it is, at a point you see the comedians, especially <laughs> skit makers, making a lot of joke out of the issues going around in the political space. For us in the country, is this a plus or minus, is it? Is it a plus and minus? Okay, both. Yeah, both. Um, is it plus because <laughs> we tend to... Uh, Go too move. far. <laughs> no, we just we just move on. <laughs> Do you understand? We just move on. It is a minus because issues that were supposed to be attended to seriously, we take it as a joke. And so those issues still lingers. And trend. And keeps trending. So it becomes a norm. Just because Nigerians don't accept that they play over. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Uh, but then, it is what is keeping us alive. You cannot compare the suicide rate we have mm. here in Nigeria to anywhere else in the world. Me now, for example, I know if you die, not even make me die. You don't get the problem. Uh, let me add to it, like the news you say, somebody ha they saw somebody on top of a mango tree. Mm, you kill it. Yeah. Not with me now. For this life, with the sweet like this, oh, they suffer this smile. Me, I can't commit suicide. Yes, yeah, suicide you know, is actually you know not, not an option. It's not you an know option. You know of rope. Why is it not an option? <laughs> it is because we, we laugh over everything. You know, we, we just find humor. We are suffering, no? Yes. But it's okay. Look at <laughs> the, the elections, for example. In the whole situation. Too much material. Some people are singing, hello. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, people, this doesn't matter. <laughs> Life goes <It's> on. <laughs> in Canada, in Canada, mm -hmm. they, they sentenced chicken to death. It's, it's, it's a serious humor. So it's an issue that we will use it to crack joke and make our money and see make the society look healthy. As as I said, whatever we are facing in Nigeria, we are not the force. It's just that we have to use the opportunity with what is around us and use it to achieve results and forge ahead. Because if you won't die, eh? As uh, uh, one of my colleagues said, uh, he said, he say, you cannot go to, uh, is it a barrier? And they started singing Happy Birthday song. A DJ cannot go to a barrier and started playing. As he they paint them, he they sweet. He they no born away. He go know life. Bro. No, he go know it. He go know it. He go, they go tell him after. <laughs> so that is it. <laughs> Basically, it's a plus, it's a minus. Okay. I've been engaging with two 
uh, gentleman here on Omeda say to as the president of Buja body of comedians and Mr. Ode, a comedian. Remember. We're still, they're still in the studio. <laughs> no, a member yeah, of the man. body of comedians. I'm a floor member. I'm a floor member. I'm a political talk. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm a national activist. Uh, <laughs> okay, now it's time to take a commercial break and the conversation will continue in the studio when we come back. Thank you for being there. Thank you very much for being there. The program is still Weekend Deal on the network service of the NTA. And we're talking about comedy and skits today. I have two gentlemen in the studio. Onome the Saint is the president of Abuja Body of Comedians. And I also have Mr. Ode, who is also a member of that body. Floor member. Okay, a floor member yeah. of that body. <laughs> now, continuing the conversation. Yeah. One can say it has become quite expensive to laugh. Do you know why? Stand-up comedians, when they put up their shoes, you'll be hearing one million naira for a table of ten or a table of five or two million naira, pending the caliber of the people or maybe the venue and even the caliber of the comedians. So now one can comfortably say it's so expensive to laugh. It's expensive as you buying a drug for for malaria. You know why? Because uh, uh, my senior colleague has started organizing show before me. But from my experience, for you to have good haul, you have to pay in millions. I don't want to give advice to some uh, hotels or some hall we use. For you to pay a stand-up comedian, this is what we we'll do for a living. The Bible says, a gift of a man shall make it a way for him. And he will use that to provide food for his family. Sinana, give us tea cup now. Tea no day inside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to that. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <coughs> no problem. And then, secondly, you pay the comedians. You pay for their flight ticket. Going and coming. You do their hotels. You do logistics. You, you, you do publicity. When we talk of publicity, or radio house, TV house, you talk about internet. You talk about other unnecessary things. By the time you're looking at your budget, you're talking 10 million to 15 million. Based on my level. Do we based on bros level? We be where did they do show? Who never would they put in a prayer point to the use and do? And then imagine that you're coming to pay five thousand naira, seven thousand naira for gate fee. How many people in the hall? The lowest of the hall can take is. 1,000 or one, it's not even up to one five. The best thing is for you to look at his sponsor. Those sponsors are the one buying those table. Now, ever is doing a show, his table is five million. Madam, for you to rent an eco hotel, we're talking about 10 million. The full eco hotel. 36. Okay. That is the latest price. Oh. Not transcorp here. <laughs> And then you will see buy you will see buy refreshments, drinks to put on that table for your guests. They are like guests to you. That's why that they are your sponsor. In all of those things, sometimes some of the comedians run at loss, and you see them post for each, for uh, organizing shows. That doesn't mean that they have become a filler. They want to see study the system. They want to see beauty the brand. When you become a bigger brand. Any company you go to, they accept you because you bring the publicity to them, you bring their benefit to them. Whatever they are bringing in is also contributing to their company. But like an upcoming brand, like me, I'm a, I'm a billionaire, but upcoming billionaire <laughs> that, that still need help. <laughs> that still need help. <laughs> well, okay. Well. Now, before we continue, <laughs> let me just quickly say something about this. I offered coffee, but ah. you want tea. So next time I'll get coffee and tea so Bro, I can make a choice. <laughs> okay, so now let's yeah. talk, talk about should comedy be that expensive? Oh, oh yes, you see, talk is cheap. <laughs> Until you meet a comedian. Mm -hmm. After he has talked about the show aspect of it. Okay. Promoting a concert. Now when it comes to if you if you need a comedian to come around call your event, you know how much you're parting with. For various reasons. It is called show business all right now um because it's a show business there are a lot of expectations 
on the stand-up comedian. Of course, he now attains the status of a celebrity. And when you see a celebrity, there are certain things you expect to, you see. Know, to see. You expect him to look good. Okay, you were trying to say something about a uh, uh, master of ceremony and uh, stand-up uh, comedy. Must uh, you be, uh, as a stand-up, I mean, as a master of ceremony, yes. must you be a comedian? No, depending what the client wants. Okay. If you if you if you check, they have corporate MC, uh -huh. and, and each event has the kind of person they want. If it's a lively moment they want to create, if it's a party pattern, you cannot bring a corporate MC, but you can bring in a comedian that will spice the event and still MC the event. It's not everybody you can call master of ceremony. There is a certain level you get to before you say you're a master of ceremony and a stand-up comedian. You're doing two jobs for one event. A comedian and a master of ceremony. Apart from you being a stand-up comedian at that event, you are still coordinating the event to go the way your clients want. And it is also give the comedian an edge in the society or event planning. Ah, uh, this guy will come and spice the event. He's a good comedian. We, uh, we we're not using vulgar jokes, not yabbing people, all those things. The client to us or the event planner also look at all those areas and say, okay, let's bring this guy for this event. But if you look the society, everybody need a lively moment because problem too much. Well, I need to finish. Well, I need to finish. Mm -hmm. So the most, if you check the event that took place yesterday, they have more than, let's say, Almost eighty percent of the good comedians were engaged. In fact, there's something that they introduced in wedding reception. They say they, they, they want to go and do second outfit. The second outfit, you see that they'll start creating games. You see, like the one we did yesterday, I did with my colleague for thirty minutes, we we're cracking jokes. Because the lady is using thirty-five minutes to change, to change, yeah, and okay. to do makeup. So there's a space. There's a, there's a gap space. You have to fill up to that. Fill. And so that is why you say that for you to be a stand-up comedian, you must be an MC. And for you to be a master of ceremony, you must have sense of humor for your guests to enjoy what you are doing. I think uh, my, my senior colleague can throw more light on that. Okay. Let me talk from his senior colleague. There's plenty light here. <laughs> now, of course, there will be light. That is the requirement. It's a basic requirement for any studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, now, we're going to Benin. NTA Benin will tell us their own perspective of comedy. Let's watch it. If mama rap me with soda and water and bowl, if you rap me, mama will come be like cripple. <laughs> Stand-up comedy genre, among other forms, has gained a lot of popularity in the last two decades in Nigeria, usually adding color, relief, and left out the social occasions. What is skit comedy gaining grounds recently? The comedy is uh, an aspect of entertainment that did with serious statements, but lightly and uh, jocularly. Making money, making people to laugh, you know. Um, there are some persons that are depressed, actually, so, you know, making them laugh will release them from depression. I think this kid is actually taking over the comedy industry because we have a lot of young people these days try to create content. Edo has a growing number of stand-up comedians and skit makers. You don't die. You don't die. What do you kill now? Now POS boy. Overcharges. Overcharges. He died well. Because even God will create that they collect 10%. If they charge past God. Eh? The very young ones who are into skit making seem to be on top you know but uh, the bottom the bottom line is that it is still the startup comic who is who is there permanently you know the skit makers are actually like a flash in the pan by all means popular opinion in a dough rates stand-up and skit comedy as not only therapeutic but educative in some instance one of the days where you just do comedy for the sake of it you just you know the days of uh, them uh, our uh, the drag, Jaguar no Yebe. Right now, comedy has evolved. Comedy has evolved. It's not just about making content and throwing them out there. You, have, you also have to try and 
pass a message. Comedy is to make you laugh. You know, you know comedy is funny, just to make you laugh. Why some kids can educate you or enlighten you about something? When does a comedy or skit say too much? Indeed, where can the line be drawn between comedy and insults? There's no line, it depends on the receiver. If you don't have the ability to absorb jokes, why come into a comedy show? Because definitely the comedian is not there for you alone. Comedy is different from insult. You get to, and uh, there is in, in, there's a part of comedy that has to do with teasing. Okay, now you can tease a person without insulting that person. For regulation, there are ethical guides for comedy that comedians are required to follow. In any field you find yourself, there are rules and regulations that guide um, the success of that field. And uh, content creation is not left out of it. Uh, as you know, the content we create, we don't throw them in the air. You, you post them on different platforms. No doubt today's society has accepted that comedy blurs the line between what should be offensive and the shock value it causes. Any piece of work put together by creative to make people laugh is comedy. So it's not left for you to say it's stage comedy, it is stand up comedy, it is drama, whatever it is you are doing. There's no thin line. They are, you know, uh, comic relief for you to maybe absorb very serious issues, you know, with a lot of uh, cushion. Oh, I prefer comedy skits. Comedy skits, yeah. I can easily access it from my phone and I don't have to pay to watch it. Uh, I prefer the stand up comedy because people are out there to go there to card their phone. But truth be told, jokes remain the surest form of creating fun and happiness for stress relief. Yeah, it's really good to laugh, but as I said earlier, it has actually become so expensive to laugh with the advent of stand-up comedians with their high bills to attend their shows. Moving on now, talking about stand-up uh, comedy. We, there's an experience in the country now that there is a kind of flood of crossover of comedians to other aspects of entertainment. What can we say is responsible for that? Crossover? Yeah. I call it crossover because stand-up comedians are now into acting, in some of them into music. It's, all, it's still entertainment, but not stand-up well, comedy that they used to do. Well, diversifying. Oh, diversifying. Uh, so that things can, you know, just like God also say. Mm. Uh, even Jonathan was the president, now he's, he, he, he sells books. <laughs> it's all diversification. You know, so, yeah, but basically, um, everybody needs more than one stream of income. Okay. okay. And um, the stand-up comedian is not excluded, all right? And if it is going into a um, uh, movie, for example, there are two things here. It's either you're making some extra cash or you're also aiding your mileage, you know, publicity-wise, because your face is now on the screen even the more so it's about in the area of publicity is about a constant tying of your name to the face okay and then also for extra income mm. which everybody almost mm. everybody does because i know that my mind is telling me that you know that is a presenter you have one shop somewhere <laughs> <laughs> You are not right. <laughs> you think so? She has an online shop. <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> online so, boutique. So, so <laughs> yes, we. It, it's a thing that um, if for, for life to continue to move in the right direction, you can't rely on just one source. Yes, we make money. Okay. But money is never enough. Okay, but what people think that it's because uh, maybe uh, they have run out of content or probably because of the advent of skit making that is taking no, over no, that's not comedy true. space. That's not true. We cannot run out of content because there is always something happening. Okay, um, let me add to 
my senior colleague. You don't see skit makers at event. You only see them for special appearance. But skit make, uh, a stand up comedian is making skit, cashing out his money from the internet or from the Facebook, which is monetization and other stuff, and still doing his event, still having his ambassadorship, still going to perform at shows. All of that is extra stream of income. Okay. Because you know, go do one job. If you do okay. one job, eh? So quickly, how do you plenty. now draw inspiration for content so that you don't run out of content? You have to keep thinking. A good thinker must write. That's why I assume I'm, I'm, I'm with the part. And a good thinker must keep doing research and learn from other people. Now, God don't say something last month when we we're having a gathering. The skit makers, the jokes that some of the comedians have performed, they'll copy it. So you did to form skit. So they convert into skit. They convert it to skit, okay. which is so those they, jokes. They now act okay. it. Now they now act it. Okay. So now in your final words, where do you expect to see comedy and skit making in Nigeria in few years to come? Comedy and skit making has come to stay. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the two brands of comedy need a core. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are existing side by side. All right, uh, and so in few years to come, we expect that the industry on both sides would have grown bigger mm -hmm. because more people will continue to go into skit making, more people will continue to go into stand up comedy. And whether you like it or not, that synergy is still always there. And that is why, okay, once in a while, you find that there are skit makers on our shows. The reason is that they have presence online. And we have also deducted that audience would want to see them, not necessarily because they want to give you the content, the content you know, that they should give as a stand-up comedian. Okay, quickly, your final words. Where you expect comedy and skit to be in Nigeria? For me, comedy, Nababa, skit making, Donda comedy. And the nearest future, there are still more comedians coming. Skit making is only when you are creative that you can keep shooting and keep creating content. Okay. Thank you very much. I must thank you guys for being part of the show today. There were two caps today. Don't forget, they first of all served as clergy and also as comedians in the studio. Honomed the state, President uh, Abuja Body of Comedians, and uh, Mr. Mr. Ode. Ode a member of a broader body of comedians. Thank you very much for being part of the show. Thank you. Moving on now, we we'll take a break. And when we come back, we we'll talk about other things. Thank you. Thank you very much for being there. Up next is Art Life. And in the spirit of Esther, the title of this one is Finding Christ. Christian art is a sacred art that uses themes and images in Christianity with the aim of connecting believers to the spiritual through the art, which was the focus of the Creole Art Exhibition put together by the Family Worship Center, WIE, and the Society of Nigerian Artists, themed Finding Christ. Creole is a Greek word that means creativity. And so the church thought it well to just showcase the creativity of all the uh, 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 talented people in church and outside the church. I mean, this year's theme is uh, finding Christ. Uh, you either find Christ through joy, find Christ in sorrow, find Christ in tears through returns and twists and turns of life. Either way, you find Christ. You can find Christ in the marketplaces. You can find Christ even through your personal experience. Art is often thought of as something decorative, a beautiful afterthought. But Creole Christian Art Exhibition is a great way to evangelize and spread the word of Christ through the beautiful Christian-themed works, thereby leading believers and non-believers to finding Christ. This is very special to me right now. And for somebody who doesn't know what is happening here, this is Jesus washing the feet 
of a disciple. Basically, this is a picture of servanthood. It's a picture of servanthood. Jesus is telling all of us to become servants. And the reason I'm excited about this right now is that I understand that the campaigns for the different offices, political offices, started today. And I hope they are all campaigning to come and be servants, not leaders. Uh, one of the things Jesus said was that somebody asked him, who is the greatest? And he said, the greatest of you is the one who serves. And in order to show them what servanthood means, is that you who is great, be humble, come down and serve everybody. So servanthood basically means seeing the need of people and then helping them to meet that need. The people who are bringing themselves to fill all the offices will think about this, that I'm going to that office to serve Nigeria and to serve Nigerians, not to be on top there, but to come down and meet the need of the masses. Wow, this thing looks so real. Yes, it's Jesus washing his disciples' feet. I like the way they color this and the way they painted everywhere. I like the shades of color. This is um, charcoal on paper. It's a drawing that we made in relation with the team Finding Christ. The title of the drawing is Ease. So what inspired this art? I think every Christian, every Christian has experienced this state. Like when you're finding Christ and in the in the midst of all the chaos, the, the, the troubles and everything, the moment you find Christ, you find ease. So that is what inspired this um, drawing. The Faith Come By Hearing series is a series I've been doing. So we have um, an individual with a headphone that is uh, plugged into the Bible. So he's listening to the Word of God, building himself up. You know, then there is the Daniel in the lion then setting as well. So we have these lions surrounding this very individual but it is not daniel you know but it's the same plot all right now what he's doing is he's listening to the word of god and if you look uh, on the floor you notice that there is um, a circle of some sort that separates him from the lions you know so he's building himself up psalm 23 is where it is actually themed from a table is set before me right in the presence of my enemies it's a bold step to actually be eating pounded yam where you have a pride of lions finding christ that is creativity in display there there's creativity everywhere even now being is an act of creativity of god almighty and now we're joining uh the vatican church for the Easter service with the Pope. That has been the practice of the NTA to celebrate the Easter Sunday. Happy Easter to all you all.